All right, we're going to take a look at some of the Bengals coverages, which I have great admiration and respect for. I love what they do. I love when they play certain coverages. I really like how they try to keep everything in front, force you as an offense to execute up and down the field. They don't really risk a ton, and they give you very minimal opportunities to throw the ball downfield. Um, in between, I shouldn't say in between the hashes. I should say in the middle third of the field. Let's put it that way. We're going to look at, I think, um, 13 plays. It's going to be a mixture, guys, of pass plays from week five, pass plays from this past week, week 18, and some pass plays from last year because in, in week seven because I think the Ravens are trying to run a couple of routes against these coverages that they rarely run against other teams. All right, now that we got the plays loaded up, obviously week five of this year, you've got a Z-hide concept for nine yards to do. Ravens need to do some of this, in my opinion, get cheap yards out into the flats. The Bengals generally are lined up in, look at this, look how, look at the off alignment that you have here. The Ravens have the ball on the 48. Not a single defensive back is lined up closer than the 41. So you're talking about seven yards for this corner, eight for this one, nine here, and it looks like 13 there. Zehide gets him out into the flat. Who's going to defend it? An edge defender or an inside linebacker? That's it. That's the only possible guy who can defend it. Now, when they play man on third down, you're not going to be running a hide concept. Didn't see this at all in uh, week 18. To be honest with you, what I do like about it is you've got Ricard who can block the edge defender, kind of gives the edge defender a block to react to. And then now the inside linebacker, in this case Pratt, is the player who has to help defend it. And he's got a problem there. He's got run action away from him. Simultaneous to that, a route that I'm going to talk about that the Ravens have run multiple times. Now you're going to say, you know, Demarcus Robinson is wide open. Well, he is, but the ball's already been thrown. But this route combination, <clears throat> the deep over with a clear out route from the front side, but that clear out route goes inside of the corner. So the corner releases it to the safety. That's the whole point here. This is intelligent design by the Ravens to match the level of intelligence that the um, Bengals play with. These deep over routes the safety for the Bengals is going to take. The corner's generally going to zone that off, unless it's man, obviously. He's generally going to zone that off, and you can see that's what Eli Apple's doing. So then he would help with, you know, the matching deep crosser from the other side, but that's not what this is. It looks like it, and then Robinson is going to take it up the field. Yes, you, you would like to see, put your foot in the ground at some point and throw the football here once we've established this. I'm not talking about on this particular play. Obviously, it's a nine-yard gain. It's a successful play. Lamar pretty much knew where he was going with the football. Is that still available to the, to the Ravens? Absolutely. If the Bengals play the coverages that they do, those off-quarters coverages, absolutely. Same game, second drive. Over concept. Ball's got to be thrown, I believe. But it looks like Lamar thinks there's pressure in the um, – in the interior. So again, you got Duve running the over concept. On this side, this guy is just running an occupy route. He's just occupying this defensive back, which I think is Bates, so that we can throw this route over the top. This ball's got to be thrown if you ask me. Lamar thinks there's pressure because he sees, I think it's Logan Wilson. I could be wrong. That might not be Logan Wilson. Someone blitzing through the B gap. I still think the ball's got to be thrown like now. It's man coverage. Duve is, in my opinion, a little late. In, and what he's trying to do is he's trying to press this, this DB upfield. He's trying to intentionally make contact with him so then he can bring this back to the sideline. So he's trying to create space by creating contact first. And he has done so, in my opinion, the ball should have been out already. And that should have been a completion somewhere around the between the bottom of the numbers and the sideline. That is the same concept as the last one I just – it's a very similar concept, let's put it that way. Instead of Demarcus Robinson, you know, a clear-out route and a deep over concept, you just have basically an Occupy route, Occupy in the corner because we pretty much understood and thought that we were going to get man, and we did. All right, week 18. 
you got the snag concept. There's multiple guys in this location. It's not uncommon for us to run snag with the running back into the flats. In fact, that is how we do it to a single receiver side. <laughs> Let's say that Tylen Wallace was over here on this side. Okay, you would get snag by likely and flats by the running back. That's typical. In this case, it looks like to me we've got two young guys both running the snag concept. Great catch by likely. Again, the boundary side inside linebacker <clears throat> would normally be the guy who stays on the inside leverage here but we've got the Bengals dropping to cover three, and it's really brilliant how the Bengals do this. I love how they do this and the reason why. So the ball is on the right hash. So the field side is down here. you got more space down here to the field, all right? So what they're doing is instead of dropping you know, these two to the hash, which is typical for inside linebackers, you're, you would be stressing Logan Wilson in terms of comparing him to a safety and athletically. So what they do is they keep Pratt in the flats to the boundary, less space to cover. Wilson, <clears throat> Ash to the boundary, a little bit less space to cover. And they drop down Jesse Bates to the field side hash. Just brilliant, brilliant use of personnel. So to the field where you have more space, you've got two defensive backs covering that area as opposed to an inside linebacker and a defensive back. This is cover three, even though Eli Apple – um, is not really getting any depth. He identifies that there's a short inside release by he, there's an inside release by two, so he understands it's basically going to be man on one now. In any case, Pratt overextends it, but he doesn't misplay this. Pratt's playing the flat. He's supposed to get outside of that route. If he was playing the hook, if he was playing the hook this area on this snag, he would stay inside of it just like he did. Um, <clears throat> on another video that I showed you guys talking about the Ravens offensive line. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a drop cover three to the field. They're dropping the safety to the field. All right, another coverage that uh, the Ravens, or another way that the Ravens have tried to take advantage is the snag and then the flat coming from the other side. So instead of the running back running out into the flats. So like in the last play, running back out into the flats snag here. You had two guys doing it. You had Tylen Wallace and Isaiah Likely, but I don't care about that and, and from the standpoint of trying to break this film down. What they're doing is now we're bringing Marquise Brown in motion. He's running the flat. Bateman <clears throat> is running the snag, and we're RPO in it. The running back is crossing face. So what we're doing is we're giving this inside linebacker who would normally de defend that snag, which we just talked about. That's why I put these plays in this order. We're giving him something to worry about, the mesh, the possibility of the handoff, and it forces him to respect that run concept, move down to the bottom side of our screen, the right side of the defense, left side of the offense, opens up that snag for Bateman. This concept can be used against them. Am I saying that it will succeed every time? No. The Bengals will adjust. They adjust quickly and they adjust well. You've got to play chess with them, and they're very good at it. So you can see the inside linebacker I'm talking about is Pratt. You can see he goes with Tyson Williams. You've got a pulling right tackle, pulling center in Bozeman, who's no longer with us, obviously. So the Ravens are getting a two-on-one out here because the edge player is not going to expand, and the inside linebacker isn't always going to run out, but it, it depends on the coverage they play. And I'm going to show you a play here in a moment when he actually does do that, which is what makes it difficult playing against the Bengals defense. All right, again, a deep over is what you would normally get from Andrews in this alignment. That's not what you get. But let's talk about this right here. That is Pratt singled up on Marquise Brown. So depending on the coverage that you get, on the last play, remember the back was on this side. He crossed Lamar's face. Pratt kind of went in that direction. Actually, I don't think it's Pratt. I think it's 59 here. Now the linebacker is going to expand. He's going to take the wheel. This ball had to be thrown last year. Like, if it has to be thrown now. That's a linebacker on Marquise Brown. Ball needed to be thrown up the right sideline. This is just man right here. If we catch the Bengals in man, where they've got the safety rolled up, and you can figure out a way to get a wheel developed. I don't know who it would be, though. We don't have anyone with equivalent uh, speed since Bateman is out, you know, to Marquise Brown, obviously. But what ends up happening is Lamar keeps it, 
you know, doesn't choose to take that matchup, and he hits Andrews late on the scramble, an amazing play. Again, it's against man, and Andrews has won, and Lamar, you know, keeps his eyes up the field. You will get the end zone angle to see this. It was a great play. I think it was like a 19 or 20 yard game. Duve would have been a perfect guy to, you know, run that route like that, if you ask me. See if we could get that matchup against a linebacker. Deshaun Jackson, maybe, but, you know, when he was on the field, we had a tendency to be more, you know, pass-based as opposed to the run. All right. <clears throat> Another coverage that they play that is just brilliant, I love, is they'll play cover three, but then they'll play man. So you're talking about a three-man rush. This three-man rush has given us problems. You know, we obviously had the sack in week 18. Look at the, the way this distributes. So let's go here. You got cover three. And here's your underneath droppers. Now, one guy's deeper than the other three underneath droppers because he's a safety coming down from depth. And this is third and 15. He doesn't need to be at six yards depth from the line of scrimmage. So you've got cover three here and here. Cover three normally has a four-man rush, but what they've done is they've taken flowers and put him man on Andrews inside of that cover three. So you have a cover three distribution with man stacked inside of it and a three-man rush. Like I said, creative, trusting the coverage guys. They have a lot of athletic dudes, you know, back there to cover, even their inside linebackers. You can see flowers stacked on Andrews, clearly getting ready to play him man. Usually bring him in on third downs if they're going to play man, to play man on a tight end. And we get a sack. Really, I don't think there was any, anyone open there. I didn't really look at it from the all-22, to be honest with you. All right, week five, 22 personnel. RPO, putting that linebacker to our right in conflict. So I'm talking about right here. You can see that the Bengals are in their 5-2 or their 3-4 look. They're matching our personnel. They're matching our 22 personnel. But the cool thing about this is normally if this was Marquise Brown, the play I just showed you, you know, he's going to run a wheel. Well, we've got a tight end here. So he's not going to be able to get out there and threaten in that manner. So we're, we're looking at routes like this. You know, maybe even a comeback curl. And then the flat route becomes Andrews, who's really good after the catch. So I think this is expert. This is first play. Is this first play of the game against them? It might be the second play. I know it's the first drive. It's a first and 10. You can see the mesh with Dobbins. This inside linebacker has expanded. This edge player has expanded. I mean, you could really make an argument that you would like to see this ball be a give. But, you know, Lamar may be reading... He may be not be reading it at all, maybe a design play to get it out there to Andrews. You know, we'll never know. That's what makes it tough to make definitive statements, to be honest with you, about some of these quarterback reads because we don't know what they're being told to read pre-snap. We know what it looks like. Certainly looks like an RPO to me. We get a seven or an eight-yard gain to Andrews. Physical finish by the Bengals' defense. Let's talk about that just for a second, I guess, since that's become a topic <clears throat> this week. There is no difference between what the Bengals' defense defenders are doing right now once the whistle blows and what the Ravens' guys are doing. They're the whistle blew. Watch the ref. The ref's hand is up. All right? The play's over. These guys are continuing to compete. Now, Andrews did fumble one of those on the same exact play against the Jags, if you remember, on the first drive. All right. Week 18 here. Now, you're going to have to trust me on this because I don't know that I give you the – actually, I might give you the all-22 on the next play. This is mesh, and again, uh, the Bengals are dropping guys out in coverage. They're dropping out Hendrickson and also Pratt, who I think lined up on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's Pratt. There's Hendrickson. Both of those guys are going to drop out. Ends up being a three-man rush. One, two, three. Just brilliant use of personnel, if you ask me. Brown tries to fit this ball in there again, man. I, I think there's something to be said about him, man. It's interesting. He's willing to throw the football in spaces where guys aren't always willing to do that. And I mean all NFL quarterbacks, you know, not just ours. Dropping eight in coverage, clogging up the pass lanes. This is supposed to be mesh, if you ask me. Normally, you know, you got a drag from one side, you got a drag from the other, and they are designed to be next to each other at a certain point. And then you'll normally have somebody sit in the middle of the field once that sifts itself out, once that sorts itself out. 
In this case, Watkins, Kolar, both being new to the offense, at least in terms of games. Although Watkins played for us last year. All 22. Okay, I did give you the all 22. So you'll see it's a pretty bad example of mesh. Don't like it at all because of we have so many guys near each other. And he's trying to fit this thing in here to Kolar. You know, with the safety in the corner, outside leverage, you know, essentially zoned this off. Once Robinson goes in, this corner, uh, Cam Taylor Britt's just going to zone it off. He's going to let him go and look for the other crosser. Brown's trying to fit that in there. Now, this is an example of, you know, with the three man rush, we've got time here. So we've got time to let things develop, but we have very short field to deal with. And that's why the uh, Bengals are playing this drop eight, dropping eight in coverage, trying to clog up all the passing lanes. All right. Empty, I mean, uh, excuse me, trips. And we got likely backside. And this route with the snag flat is interesting to me. So I have this labeled as snag. That, that's not a snag route necessarily the way he runs it, but the running back goes out into the flats and you have the deep, the, the shallow over here. So to me, this is our snag flat. Now, last year when we ran this, it happened often. Bateman would run that snag and Andrews would end up kind of close to him. It looks like the Ravens this year have kind of modified it some. So there's a little more space there. Again, trying to trying to complete a pass, you know, somewhere in somewhere in this area here, whether it's the snag or the later developing over route by Kolar, which looks like it's open as well against Cam Taylor Britt. In this case, you get a change of direction by likely. Little change of direction. And Flowers seems to be looking back at the quarterback, even though this is man, likely ends up getting a huge gain. Against man, that matchup, to be honest with you, might be one that we want, Flowers versus likely. But if we have likely and Andrews on the field at the same time on third down, it'll be interesting to see who Flowers goes to. Going quads is a great option against their coverages. Talked about this in a video earlier this week. The Bengals don't want to move that safety there, generally. Um, second and nine, at least, passing situations. If it's 22 personnel, then they'll drop him down and they'll try to stop the run. It's just, just versatile, and they can do that from a nickel alignment. They can do that with safeties, anybody. But going quads, if you ask me, is a smart development. So the number one receiver, Robinson, can run you know, a curl. He can run you know, two to hash, up to hash. Prochet running the wheel. It's not the one he stepped out of bounds on. And then Drake running out into the flats. So what you're doing is you're really stressing this guy in terms of horizontal stress. There's a lot out there going on toward the sideline. And in this case, he expands too much. Kolar sits, boom. Quick completion, 15 yards on a second and nine. The Ravens are going to go quads on Sunday night football. But they're not going to do it. They're not going to line up in it. They're going to motion to it with a running back like this. I love it. I think, I think it's interesting. I, I would almost advocate for you that instead of starting here in the backfield, that, that Drake should start out here. Get, get these guys to make their coverage calls on this side of the field and then run him across. I, I wonder if that could create that continue to create this horizontal stretch here. Additionally, you know, this is not the route that's run, but you can run snag wheel. So Crochet runs the wheel here. Demarcus Robinson, you know, two to hash, up to hash. Kolar kind of sits it down. I think you could run snag here. And so then what you would do is you would read this defender, see if he gets horizontal width, then you throw it to Kolar. If he does not get horizontal width, then you throw it to the snag, which would be Robinson somewhere in here. If they play it the way that they often do, the Broncos play it this way as well, uh, the snag could be covered by the inside linebacker. Occasionally, the safety will come down and cover it. Then you can look for the wheel. So you would say, well, we need somebody to win that wheel matchup. Well, Isaiah likely won it against Eli Apple the other day. Uh, would I want Prochet running that against Jesse Bates in terms of a matchup? No. But the idea is, and this route combination accomplishes the goal, is looking for underneath options, deeper options. And at some point, we've got to get our quarterbacks to release this ball downfield up here and give the guys an opportunity to go make a play. Now, there is a safety in the middle of the field, Von Bell, who would be able to uh, be a part of it, don't get me wrong. And when you have this here, easy money, you take it. 
In my opinion, there are plays to develop against this Bengals defense. They're a little bit atypical, though. The Ravens have got to go a little bit outside their structure to do so, which is which speaks a lot to the um, to the Bengals defense, the quality of their defense, and that they will force you to kind of execute things that you don't want to. This is really cover three, even though it doesn't look like it. I think it's a pretty bad job by Eli Apple. Um, it is cover three. Here's your underneath droppers, these four. This guy, Cam Taylor Britt, is manned up on the tight end by himself because you have trips here. You got one, two, three receivers to the side. So this is just cover three versus trips. That's all this is. It's a man call on the backside, lock call, Louie, whatever they want to call it. That's why this corner, you know, isn't pushed off further because he's playing man on this defender. And this corner is pushed off further. Now he has a route developing in that area. You got a wheel by likely. Crochet running this curl. There is no third route. Like, remember on the last one that was up to the top of the screen? You know, Drake was out into the flats. Again, this happened often in Week 18. I'd say it happened four times. And I've very rarely seen that happen where the fullback and the tailback both end up in the same area. In any case, Brown keeps it, throws it up the sideline. Is that, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Something you can replicate. Is that sustainable? No, you're not going to get six or seven passes like that. But Isaiah likely makes contested catches. He makes big catches. I think you've got another version of cover three here. They're dropping the boundary side D end out into the flats. And it, just like with the Ravens, it's a D end, an outside backer, so he's not going to get as much depth as the secondary, second-level players who consistently take pass drops in practice. So to me, you've got curl flat, hook, hook, flat, Deep thirds, middle thirds, deep thirds. That's what I see. <clears throat> and we're running four verticals. Ravens have run this play dating back to 2020. If you remember against the Colts in 2020 in Indianapolis, sorry, uh, we ran this to Nick Boyle, I think it was. So basically what you're doing is you're reading a free safety and you're throwing it over the linebacker level. So you got one tight end running a vertical, another tight end running a vertical, and then, you know, somewhere out here, you've got your third and fourth vertical that all those are designed to do is hold these corners on outside leverage so that you can throw it to either this tight end or this tight end, depending on your free safety read. Now, you've got an inside linebacker up at the top. I think it's Pratt, and he's getting a pretty damn good pass drop. So he's underneath of Oliver's vertical, pretty heavy, whereas Wilson's eyes are in the backfield, and he's doesn't have the same depth that Pratt does. Brown zips it over the top. 22-yard game for likely. All right, you guys let me know what you think. I didn't include any pictures or diagrams. I drew some up in the Discord um, after a question last night. Some people asked me, like, how would you attack the Bengals? And I just drew up some quick stuff. Um, I don't know that it would necessarily work, but to be honest with you, a lot of stuff I drew up is what I showed you in this video. The Bengals do have very intelligent players. They have immaculately designed coverages. They try to keep things in front and limit the big play. It's just classic old-school defense, and so that's why I respect it and give them so much credit. Having said that, I still think that the Ravens had some decent ideas on how to attack them, attack them in the pass game. Obviously, you got to get good pass pro. you got to have a run game that is somewhat consistent or can at least give you, give you the opportunity to go play action a few times. Straight drop back passing against this Bengals defense, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to go 22 of 27 passing. I mean, for real. We might be able to go 17 of 27 and hit three or four big pass plays. Look, we hit nine plays of 11 yards or more in Sunday's game with Anthony Brown and no Mark Andrews and obviously no, no Lamar Jackson. Could we recreate that in Sunday night football? Yeah, uh, I think we could. If the Bengals play the same coverages, if we make the same reads and push the ball downfield in the same manner, give guys an opportunity to make a play, Isaiah likely can make those plays. Sammy Watkins had two huge catches against Cam Taylor Britt. I think Cam Taylor Britt is a brilliant rookie, and he's really good coming forward and aggressive against the run. I think he's a matchup. I think Sammy Watkins is a matchup problem for him on our right side. You guys, let me know what you think of the video, whether you're a Bengals or a Ravens fan. You know, I was trying to show respect to what the Bengals do because I enjoy trying to figure out why they do what they do. Sometimes it's a little random for me, but it, but it generally works out. And let me know what you think of the Ravens' pass plays I showed you. 
and how they might be able to attack these this Bengals defense in a way to get them to you know 21, 23, 24 points and have a chance to win the game on Sunday Night Football. Appreciate you guys' time.